beautiful. Now, principle six, letting go of control and domination. That is so hard. That's, that's so easy. hard to let go of control. It's really easy, you know why? <laughs> In <laughs> some situations. We all want to control everything, but you know what? That's just a feeling again. The wanting to control is a feeling. When you go back and feel it as a feeling and don't get involved in the story, just feel that feeling of wanting to control and let the feeling go. That's easy to let the feeling go. Then the situation will balance itself out. I see. Because there is a bigger harmony. Yes. And the more you let go of wanting to control, the more the harmony can just fall into place by itself. Yes. So don't dwell on the situation, dwell oh, on your feeling okay. of wanting to control and let that feeling go. Just feel it. Yeah, but it's good to feel it, and then, yeah, that it's makes crucial. a lot of it's sense. It's crucial to feel the feeling. Now, the last principle, number seven, discovering your perfect nature, becoming a friend. Mm, that's nice. That's really important, because most of us don't know how to be, you know, we want everything from others. Be my friend, he didn't <laughs> give me this, he didn't do that. But we don't know how to be a friend to ourselves, mm -hmm. or to others. So this is a chapter about really stepping back and learning what it means to be a friend to yourself, to give to yourself what you're craving from others. Because if you're constantly wanting, wanting, wanting from someone, you're not their friend. You're kind of using them to make you happy. And that's not friendship. And it's certainly not love. And it certainly creates a lot of disappointment and fear. So if you start becoming your own best friend and giving yourself all the treats you want and also giving them what you want, things will change around. And a lot of fear goes away. You feel happy. You feel contented. You begin to attract different kinds of people. And you're not using a relationship to make you happy. That's a big danger. That is a danger. I did that. I am. I admit it. We've For years and it. years, that was. We've all done that. I'd go from one to the next. Like yeah. being by myself, I just couldn't deal with it. And I had to get some therapy and deal with yeah, my and issues. Yeah, you learn how to be your own best friend. Yes. And then when sure. you do that, you realize, gee, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. I'm complete. I have all the goodness inside of me. Uh, and, and you don't have to seek that always from someone else on the outside. So. Yeah, now, speaking of therapy, you're a practicing I therapist. Am. Can you tell us how people can reach you and here um, in well, New York? Sure. Well, my, my, my email is topspeaker at yahoo.com. Okay. I do see clients, and then we have a wonderful workshop program called the Disowned Self, Welcoming Him or Her Home. And that's really, people love that. I love that. It's so beautiful because it's about welcoming that part of ourselves up that we've kind of pushed away and disowned and we don't want to give it any attention or any time but it's, it's integrating it into our and that is so exciting because when people do that a lot of fear leaves and a lot of excitement and joy and they find such surprising things hidden waiting right inside themselves it's so I do that workshop a lot it's very beautiful and, and others as well and what is your website the what website is www.becomefearless.org I want to thank you so much, thank everyone. You. It's a wonderful book, Fearless, Seven Principles of Peace of Mind. Peace of Mind. And The Anger Diet we're going to talk about next time. Yes, I always read the books first, and I okay. have to be interviewed for this. Okay. So we're going to have to come back to New York and get you back on It's Your Health Radio. Okay. Remember, if you want to hear another interview uh, with the wonderful Dr. Shoshana, oh, go to itsyourhealthradio.org, you. go on audio archives, and look for Dr. Shoshana. Hugs. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much. You it's too. Thank you. To meet. We are in New York City filming It's Your Health TV. We're on this wonderful location with the fabulous Carol Ward, who wrote Worried Sick, Break Free from Chronic Worry to Achieve Mental and Physical Health. Carol, welcome to It's Your Health TV. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm glad that you're in New York City. It's a great city. Yes, it is a great city. And, you know, there's a lot to worry about these days. And what do you hear most from your clients in terms of worry? The most I hear about is definitely the economy. The economy is making people very, very worried. And now with the oil spill, a lot of people are environmentalists, and they're caring about the animals. They're worried about the animals. And it just brings up their own feelings of vulnerability. You know, when they think about an animal being covered in oil and they think oh I feel vulnerable too what can I do to help so definitely the economy some international stuff and then how the economy is affecting people's families because if someone loses that loses their job then that has a trickle-down effect for everyone else yeah it definitely does you know I am a big mind-body person and that's why I love your book so much and as everyone knows if people listen to it's your health radio it's your health radio.org I love bioenergetics and you talk about we, we talked about that in our interview and if you can tell us a little bit about the mind-body connection and worry and then ways to 
help people deal with worry? Sure. I'm also a big believer, as you know, in the, the body-mind connection. It's it just, I think it's the, the most important connection that we have. And I think I want people to know that we don't just deal with difficulties in our mind and process them in our brain, but we also process them through our bodies. You know, we might develop tense shoulders because we've heard some difficult news, or we might gasp and hold our breath because we've heard something that startles us. But unless we deal with that, it doesn't go away. So we find ourselves with shallow breathing or tense shoulders or lower back pain. And unless those things are medically based, meaning there's a medical problem, it's usually got an emotional root to it. So some of the things that we can do is to start paying attention to the body. Notice when our jaw is tight or our shoulders are tense and simply ask if those areas could speak, what might they be letting me know? What might they be saying? And I know it sounds like an odd question, but it's amazing the kinds of information that people come up with. They'll be like, oh, my shoulders are feeling angry yes. or my jaw is feeling like I'm sad. But if you can't find the words, you can often say, well, if there was a color associated with that area, what might it, do, might, what might it be? Well, my, my, my shoulders feel red. Well, what emotion is associated with the color red? So you can use whatever Anger. you want. Yeah. Exactly. To kind of cue yeah. your mind into what you might be feeling. Yeah, and then maybe you can visualize blue exactly. or green or something that you find soothing. Another thing I find helpful is throughout the day is to take a deep breath. And oftentimes I'll find it's difficult that I, and it gets stuck and I kind of have to push past this lump, you know, and That's it's right. difficult. And I think the more you can deep breathe, the better. Do you have any breathing techniques that you can show us? I do. We can do. The one that I recommend, and many people know this one, but they forget about it because, you know, they forget to breathe during the day. And I recommend doing it with your hands. And that's to place your hand on your chest so that you can actually feel if you're taking a deep breath and one just on the lower stomach or abdomen and simply breathe in through the nose for four counts one two three four hold it for four one two three four exhale through the mouth for four counts and just try that again so oh, breathing good. in yeah breathing in through the nose for four two three four hold it two three four Exhale, two, three, four. Now, why is the holding it hard? Because that sometimes, seems harder. Yeah, I know, what's isn't going it? On it's with, a slowing down. Oh, because some people go, oh, yeah, I can breathe in. That's how my daughter yes. does it when I try to get her to do deep breathing. It's and only you, five, but still. Right, you, get, you hyperventilate. So yes. you might feel almost a little bit dizzy mm -hmm. when you hold your breath a little bit because okay. you're not used to all the oxygen coming to your head. But definitely just hold it. I'm saying for four, but you could do it for five or three. Whatever it feels How many times should you do this? I recommend doing it four or five times. Okay. You can play with it a little bit. Okay. Just okay. allow okay. yourself to take that. Yeah, sometimes breath. you can do that anywhere. Anywhere. No one knows if you're breathing in like that. Your chair. Yeah, it's so important. Now, what, is some of, what are some of the tapping techniques? Some of the tapping techniques I recommend, and tapping helps you disrupt the kind of looping and worried thinking that goes on. You know, when you're worried, it's like being on a hamster wheel. Yes. I'm thinking, I'm worried, I'm worried, and we can't imagine that we could step off. Mm -hmm. So what I recommend, we can, you know, sort of demonstrate with our hands, is to place your hands on your knees. Okay. Palms down, exactly. Okay. And then just close your eyes and just start alternating tapping. Back and forth, 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 back and forth. Do this for about a minute. And when you first start out, Lisa, of course, you're like, this isn't going to work. My mind is still going. But over time, as you tap back and forth and focus on that tapping, okay. you're going to distract yourself and start to calm down. And I recommend doing that for three or four times.